اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورہ ٹویلو یوسف جوزف مکن پیریڈ پیریڈ آف ریولیشن Upon examination of the contents of this surah, it would appear that it was probably revealed in the last phase of the Prophet's life in Mecca. At that time, the Quraysh were considering ways of how to get over the threat posed by the Prophet, peace be upon him, whether to kill or banish or imprison him. At the same time, probably at the instigation of the Jews, some of the Meccans tried to test whether the Prophet, peace be upon him, derived his knowledge from on high or not. To this end they asked him, What caused the Israelites to migrate to Egypt? They asked this question because the Arabs were unfamiliar with the story. There was no trace of it in their historical traditions. More importantly, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had not referred to it before. The Meccans, therefore, thought that there were only two possibilities. One, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would answer the question, but would fail to answer it in detail. The other possibility was that under one pretext or the other, he would try to defer answering the question so as to gain time. They also thought that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would subsequently solicit help from some of the Jews, and this would inevitably and completely expose him. It would then become clear to all that he had no access to the divine source of knowledge. But the result of the test was quite contrary to their expectations. For God enabled the Prophet, peace be upon him, to narrate the whole story of Joseph then and there. Not only that, but the story was wholly applicable to the contemporary situation of the Quraysh. It showed that the Quraysh were playing the role of Joseph's brothers. Main Objectives of the Surah The story was revealed to achieve two main objectives. Firstly, in order to provide proof that would establish Muhammad's peace be upon him claim to be a prophet. It was also significant that the evidence which was being provided was proof asked for by the opponents themselves rather than proof which was volunteered by the prophet peace be upon him. Thus it was possible to establish by the test which the prophet's opponents had themselves proposed that this source of knowledge was revelation rather than hearsay. This purpose is spelled out firstly in verses 3 and 7 and quite forcefully again in verses 102 to 3. The second purpose in revealing this surah was to highlight the close resemblance of Prophet Joseph's peace be upon him and his brother's story with the situation then pertaining in Mecca. The resemblance was so close that the very narration of Joseph's story amounted to a reminder to the Quraysh that their attitude towards the Prophet, peace be upon him, was similar to that of Joseph's brothers. Now, Joseph's brothers failed to defeat God's plan. Instead, they lay humbled at the feet of their brother, a brother whom once they had callously cast into a pit. The implication being that the Quraysh will meet a similar end. Their machinations against God's plan will be reduced to naught. A time will come when the Quraysh in the manner of Joseph's brothers will also be forced to beg for the mercy of the same brother whom they were once bent upon annihilating. This purpose has also been set forth in the very opening part of this surah, see verse 7, where it has been said, Verily, in the story of Joseph, peace be upon him, and his brothers, there are many signs for those who inquire about the truth. By linking the story of Prophet Joseph, peace be upon him, to the encounter between Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Quraysh, the Quran virtually prophesied what was going to happen. The events which unfolded during the ten years following the revelation of the Surah represent the fulfillment of that prophecy. One year and a half or two years after the revelation of this surah, the Quraysh hatched a conspiracy against the Prophet, peace be upon him. They did so in a manner reminiscent of the conspiracy of Joseph's brothers. Like Joseph's brothers, the Quraysh attempted to assassinate the Prophet, peace be upon him. To ensure the security of his life, he was forced to migrate from Mecca. Then again, during his exile, 
the Prophet, peace be upon him, was able to gain ascendancy and power in a manner that reminds one of Joseph, peace be upon him. What happened to the Meccans on the occasion of the conquest of Mecca was exactly the same as had befallen Joseph's brothers on their last appearance before him in the capital of Egypt. Joseph's brothers begged him to show them mercy. In a pitiable predicament, they stood before Joseph, peace be upon him, imploring, So give us corn in full measure, and give it to us in charity. Allah rewards those who are charitable. Yusuf 12.88 Although Joseph, peace be upon him, had the power to avenge himself, he pardoned them, saying, No blame lies with you today. May Allah forgive you. He is the most merciful of all those who are merciful. Yusuf 12.92 After the conquest of Mecca, the vanquished Quraysh also stood humbled before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also had full power to avenge himself. Instead, he inquired of them, How am I going to treat you? They replied, You are a magnanimous brother and the son of a magnanimous brother. To this the prophet replied, I say to you what Joseph, peace be upon him, said to his brothers, No blame lies with you today. May Allah forgive you. He is the most merciful of all those who are merciful. You may go. All of you are free. Main Themes the two subjects mentioned above constitute the main themes of the surah. However, like other stories in the Qur'an, the present story has not been narrated either for the sake of storytelling nor just for the recording of historical facts. Instead, the story has been used as a means to effectively communicate the basic message of the Qur'an. This story also brings into sharp relief the fact that the religion of the prophets Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, peace be upon them, was the same as preached by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Those prophets had earlier invited people to exactly the same basic teachings to which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, invited people in his time. Through this story, the Qur'an highlights the conduct of Prophets Jacob and Joseph, peace be upon them, showing how it contrasts with the character and conduct of Joseph's brothers of the members of the trading caravan, of the wife of the chief, Aziz, of the upper-class ladies and ruling coterie of Egypt. These contrasting images automatically raise certain questions in the minds of those who notice the difference. For they see, on the one hand, the ideal characters which develop out of belief that one should surrender to the will of God and have a strong faith in one's accountability in the hereafter. On the other hand, they see the characters of an altogether different kind, characters molded by unbelief and ignorance, by excessive worldliness and lack of any concern for God and the hereafter. Once acquainted with these contrasting traits, everyone is able to ask his conscience, which of these two models is to my liking? Through Joseph, peace be upon him, the Quran also drives home another profound truth. It underscores that whatever God wills to happen does indeed come to happen. By his own scheming, man can neither succeed in defeating God's plan nor alter it. In fact, very often man works to execute some of his plans and everything seems to proceed satisfactorily, leading him to believe that he has succeeded in striking his target. But if the plan is not in accord with God's plan, he eventually discovers that all his efforts have been in vain, and that he has in fact implemented God's plan rather than his own. What has been said above is well illustrated by Joseph's story, peace be upon him. Joseph's brothers believe that he was the major impediment in the fulfillment of their ambitions. It is for this reason that they cast him into a pit. When that was done, they believed that they had removed that impediment from their way, once and for all. But what actually happened was that they were instrumental in placing Joseph, peace be upon him, on the first rung of the ladder which would take him to the great heights of eminence which God had destined for him. Furthermore, their behavior earned them, in the end, utter humiliation and embarrassment. For instead of visiting Joseph, peace be upon him, their brother, in an honorable way, they were compelled by force of circumstance to humble themselves before him and seek pittance from him. 
Likewise, the wife of the Egyptian chief sought to take her revenge on Joseph, peace be upon him, by means of his imprisonment. But as future events showed, her action paved the way for Joseph's rise to power and glory, peace be upon him. As for her own self, she subsequently had to suffer the embarrassment of publicly confessing her perfidy. By her action, she deprived herself of the honor and prestige that she might have enjoyed as the godmother of the ruler of Egypt. These are not isolated incidents. History is replete with instances which bear out of that no one can bring into disgrace anyone upon whom God wants to bestow honor. For God turns the tables against those who plan to humiliate someone whom He wills to dishonor. The result is that the efforts of such a person's opponents only contribute to his rise and his success. As for those who devise hostile schemes, they receive only humiliation and disgrace. Likewise, when God decides to bring about someone's downfall, nothing can sustain him. All attempts to rescue such a person end in failure, and those who engage in such attempts face utter humiliation. If someone fully grasps this, he will also realize that he should not transgress the bounds laid down by God's law while pursuing his objectives or devising strategies for that purpose. As for success and failure, they lie solely in God's hand. However, one who has the recourse to fair means to achieve right purposes will at least be spared disgrace and humiliation. On the contrary, those who resort to crooked means to achieve unrighteous purposes are bound in any case to be humiliated in the next life and are even liable to suffer degradation in the present world. Another lesson to be learned from this story is that man ought to rely on God and ought to turn to Him alone. If those engaged in struggling for the cause of the truth remembered this lesson when faced with severe opposition, they would find much-needed comfort and solace. Moreover, they would no longer feel overawed by the seemingly menacing strategies of their opponents. Thanks to their reliance on God and their disposition to leave the results of their efforts to Him, they would be able to continue their striving and fulfill their duty. The greatest lesson of this story, however, is that a true believer, one whose conduct conforms to Islamic ideals and who is also possessed of wisdom, is able to conquer a whole country by force of his moral character alone. This is well illustrated by the life of Joseph, peace be upon him. A helpless, resourceless youth at the tender age of 17, he was sold into slavery in a totally strange land. Joseph's unenviable predicament cannot be exaggerated since we know how miserable was the lot of slaves at that time. What is more, Joseph, peace be upon him, was imprisoned for an indefinite period in connection with an offense allegedly involving moral turpitude. From such depths of humiliation, Joseph, peace be upon him, rose, by dint of his faith and moral excellence, to the great eminence that we all know and eventually held sway over the whole of Egypt. Historical and Geographical Context For a better understanding of this story, let us bear in mind the historical and geographical circumstances prevailing at that time. Joseph was a son of Jacob, a grandson of Isaac, and great-grandson of Abraham, peace be upon them all. According to the biblical account, which is implicitly endorsed by the Quran, Jacob had twelve sons from his four wives, peace be upon him. Joseph, peace be upon him, and his younger brother Benjamin were born of one wife, and the other ten were born of others. Jacob, peace be upon him, was settled in the valley of Hebron, presently called Al-Khalil in Palestine. Both Isaac and Abraham, peace be upon them, had lived there before him. Moreover, Jacob, peace be upon him, had some of his property in Sheshem, presently known as Nablus. If we were to accept the findings of biblical scholars, Joseph, peace be upon him, was born in 1906 B.C. The incident mentioned in the present Surah, his dream followed by his being cast into a pit, took place around the year 1890 B.C. At that time, Joseph was 17 years old. As to the pit into which he was thrown, it was situated, according to biblical and Talmudic traditions, near Dothan to the north of Sheshem. The caravan that rescued him from the pit was traveling from Gilead, Transjordan, en route to Egypt. 
The ruins of Gilead can still be seen to the east of the river Jordan in the valley of Elbas. The 15th dynasty of Hiskos kings ruled Egypt at that time. They were of Arabian descent. Having moved from Palestine and Syria in 3000 BC to Egypt, they had seized power in Egypt. Both Arab historians and the commentators of the Quran refer to them as Amalek, Amalekites. This accords with the recent findings of Egyptologists. In Egypt, their position was that of alien invaders who established themselves owing to internal dissensions obtaining in that country. This accounts for why Joseph, peace be upon him, rose to political power in their regime. It also accounts for why the Israelites were subsequently and warmly welcomed in Egypt, were settled in the most fertile parts, and became highly influential there. All this is explained in terms of the racial affinity pertaining between them and the alien rulers of Egypt. The Hyksos continued to rule over Egypt till the end of the 15th century BC. However, during this period, political power actually resided with the Israelites. The Quran refers to God's favor upon them. When He raised prophets amongst you and appointed you the rulers, al maida 520. Later on, a massive national uprising took place and led to the overthrow of the Hyksos regime and the banishment of 250,000 Amalekites from Egypt. The Hyksos were replaced by a highly bigoted Coptic dynasty which virtually obliterated every remnant of the Amalekite period. The rulers of this dynasty also embarked upon a brutal oppression of the Israelites, the details of which have been mentioned in the Quran in connection with the story of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. A study of this period of Egyptian history reveals that the Hyksos did not at any point recognize the Egyptian pantheon of gods and goddesses. They had instead brought their own from Syria. They even tried to introduce and popularize their faith in Egypt. This explains why the Quran does not refer to the Egyptian sovereign contemporaneous with Joseph, peace be upon him, as Pharaoh, basically because the word Pharaoh had a religious connotation, why the Amalekites did not subscribe to the Egyptian religious beliefs and practices. The Bible, however, mistakenly refers to them as Pharaohs. Probably the compilers of the Bible believed indiscriminately that all Egyptian rulers were pharaohs. Modern scholars who have studied the Bible and Egyptian history from a comparative perspective believe that the king of the Hyksos dynasty, Apophis, was a contemporary of Joseph, peace be upon him. Memphis was the capital of Egypt. Today its ruins are to be found some 14 miles to the south of Cairo. Joseph, peace be upon him, arrived there when he was about 17 or 18 years of age. He remained in the house of the Egyptian chief official for two to three years and then some eight to nine years in prison. At the age of 30, he took control of the government in Egypt and continued to rule effectively for 80 years. In the ninth or tenth year of his rule, Joseph, peace be upon him, sent word to his father Jacob, peace be upon him, to migrate along with his entire family from Palestine to Egypt. In Egypt, Joseph settled there in the area lying between Dimyat, Damiera, and Cairo. The Bible calls this area Goshen. In the time of the prophet Moses, peace be upon him, descendants of Joseph, peace be upon him, still lived in this area. According to the Bible, Joseph, peace be upon him, passed away at the age of 110. At the time of his death, he enjoined that if the Israelites were to migrate from that land, they should carry his bones from there. Biblical and Talmudic accounts of Joseph's story differ in many respects from the Quranic one. However, insofar as the basic components of the story are concerned, they are common to all three accounts. In the pages that follow, we shall draw attention from time to time to the aspects of disagreement found in these three sources. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayatul Kitab Al Mubin Alif Lam Ra These are the verses of a book that clearly expounds the truth. Inna 
نزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون. We have revealed it as a recitation in Arabic that you may fully understand. We have revealed it as a recitation in Arabic. The word Quran is a derivative of the Arabic word Qara, meaning he read. The appellation Quran, with reference to a book, suggests that it is something that is meant to be read or recited over and over again by all, by the elite and commoners alike. <laughs> O Muhammad, peace be upon him, by revealing the Qur'an to you, we narrate to you in the best manner the stories of the past, although before this narration you were utterly unaware of them. إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ Call to mind when Joseph, peace be upon him, said to his father, My father, I saw in a dream eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating themselves before me. His father said, My son, Do not relate your dream to your brothers, lest they hatch a plot to harm you. Indeed, Satan is man's open enemy. Do not relate your dream to your brothers, lest they hatch a plot to harm you. This is a reference to Joseph's, peace be upon him, ten brothers, who were born of his stepmothers. He also had a real brother who was younger than him. Jacob, peace be upon him, was well aware that the stepbrothers were jealous of Joseph, peace be upon him. He was also aware that the brothers, lacking the scruples of righteous people, would not hesitate to use any means, howsoever vile, to achieve their selfish designs. Jacob, peace be upon him, therefore thought it necessary to warn Joseph, peace be upon him, about them. As for Joseph's dream, peace be upon him, its meaning was clear. Jacob, peace be upon him, was the sun. His wife, the stepmother of Joseph, peace be upon him, was the moon. And his eleven sons were the eleven stars. وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِن تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَيُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَىٰ آلِ يَعْقُوبَ كَمَا أَتَمَّهَا عَلَىٰ أَبَوَيْكَ مِن قَبْلُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقَ As you have seen in the dream, so will your Lord choose you for His task, and will impart to you the comprehension of the deeper meaning of things, and will bestow the full measure of His favor upon you, and upon the house of Jacob, peace be upon him, even as he earlier bestowed it in full measure upon your forefathers, Abraham and Isaac, peace be upon them. Surely your Lord is all-knowing, all-wise, and will impart to you the comprehension of the deeper meaning of things. The Quranic expression does not simply signify explanation of the true meaning of dreams as people are wont to believe. What it really signifies is that God would bless Joseph, peace be upon him, with the capacity to grasp complicated matters to understand the true nature of things. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ وَإِخْوَتِهِ آيَاتٌ لِلسَّائِلِينَ 
Verily, in the story of Joseph, peace be upon him, and his brothers, there are many signs for those who inquire about the truth. إذ قالوا ليوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا ونحن عصبة إن أبانا لفي ضلال مبين. And called to mind when the brothers of Joseph conferred together and said, Surely Joseph. Peace be upon him, and his brother are dearer to our father than we are, although we are a group of so many. Our father is clearly mistaken. Surely, Joseph, peace be upon him, and his brother. This refers to Benjamin, Joseph's true brother, peace be upon them, who was younger than him by a few years. اقتلوا يوسف او اطرحوه ارضا يخل لكم وجه ابيكم يخل لكم وجه ابيكم وتكونوا من بعده قوما صالحين. So either kill Joseph, peace be upon him, or cast him into some distant land, so that your father's attention may become exclusively yours, and after so doing, become righteous. قال قائل منهم لا تقتلوا يوسف وألقوه في غيابة الجب يلتقطه بعض السيارة إن كنتم فاعلين. Thereupon one of them said, Do not kill Joseph, peace be upon him. But if you are bent upon doing something, cast him down to the bottom of some dark pit. Perhaps some caravan passing by will take him out of it. After so deciding, they said to their father, why is it that you do not trust us regarding Joseph, peace be upon him, although we are his true well-wishers? Send him out with us tomorrow, that he may enjoy himself and play while we be there standing guard over him, that he may enjoy himself he may move about and pluck and eat fruit in the forest. Their father answered, It grieves me indeed that you should take him with you, for I fear that some wolf might eat him while you are negligent of him. They said, Should a wolf eat him, despite the presence of our strong group, we would indeed be a worthless lot. فَلَمَّا ذَهَبُوا بِهِ وَأَجْمَعُوا أَنْ يَجْعَلُوهُ فِي غَيَابَةِ الْجُبِّ وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ لَتُنَبِّئَنَّهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِمْ هَذَا وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ So when they went away with Joseph, peace be upon him, and decided to cast him in the bottom of the dark pit. We revealed to Joseph, peace be upon him, surely a time will come when you will remind them of their deed. They know nothing about the consequence of what they are doing. <laughs> At nightfall, they came to their father weeping. They 
And said, Father, we went racing with one another and left Joseph, peace be upon him, behind with our things. And then a wolf came and ate him up. We know that you will not believe us howsoever truthful we might be. And they brought Joseph's, peace be upon him, shirt stained with false blood. Seeing this, their father exclaimed, Nay, this is not true. Rather, your evil souls have made it easy for you to commit a heinous act. So I will bear this patiently and in good grace. It is Allah's help alone that I seek against your fabrication. وَجَاءَتْ سَيَّارَةٌ فَأَرْسَلُوا وَارِدَهُمْ فَأَدَلَى دَلْوَةٌ قَالَ يَا بُشْرَى هَذَا غُلَامٌ وَأَسَرُّوهُ بِضَاعَةٌ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ And a caravan came. And they sent their water drawer to draw water. As he let down his bucket in the well, he observed Joseph, peace be upon him, and cried out, This is good news. There is a boy. They concealed him, considering him as part of their merchandise, while Allah was well aware of what they did. <laughs> Later, they sold him for a paltry sum, just a few dirhams, and did not care to obtain a higher price. وَقَالَ الَّذِي اشْتَرَاهُ مِن مِصْرَ لِمْرَأَتِهِ أَكْرِمِي مَثْوَاهُ أَكْرِمِي مَثْوَاهُ عَسَى أَن يَنفَعَنَا أَوْ نَتَّخِذَهُ وَلَدًا The man from Egypt who bought him said to his wife, Take good care of him. Possibly he might be of benefit to us, or we might adopt him as a son. Thus we found a way for Joseph, peace be upon him, to become established in that land, and in order that we might teach him to comprehend the deeper meaning of things. Allah has full power to implement his design, although most people do not know that. ولما بلغ أشده آتيناه حكما وعلما وكذلك نجزي المحسنين. And when Joseph, peace be upon him, reached the age of maturity, we granted him judgment and knowledge. Thus do we reward those who do good. وَرَاوَدَتْهُ الَّتِي هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكْ قَالَ مَعَاذَ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ رَبِّي أَحْسَنَ مَثْوَاي إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الظَّالِمُونَ 
And it so happened that the lady in whose house Joseph was living sought to tempt him to herself. And one day, bolting the doors, she said, Come on now. Joseph, peace be upon him, answered, May Allah grant me refuge. My Lord has provided an honorable abode for me. So how can I do something so evil? Such wrongdoers never prosper. My Lord has provided an honorable abode for me. The translators, as well as the commentators of the Qur'an, interpret the expression, My Lord, as referring to the person in whose employ Joseph, peace be upon him, was at at that time. In other words, Joseph, peace be upon him, said that he could not betray his Lord, for instance, the chief who had treated him so well. What this meant is that in view of the official's kindness to Joseph, peace be upon him, his indulgence in illegitimate sex with the wife of the chief was absolutely out of the question. However, it seems altogether unbecoming of a prophet that he should abstain from a sin out of consideration for some human being rather than out of consideration for God. If we turn to the Qur'an, there is not a single instance in which a prophet would have called anyone other than God his Rabb, Lord. وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ وَهَمَّ بِهَا لَوْلَا أَرْرَآ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ and she advanced towards him, and had Joseph, peace be upon him, not perceived a sign from his Lord, he too would have advanced towards her. Thus was Joseph, peace be upon him, shown a sign from his Lord that we might avert from him all evil and indecency. For indeed, he was one of our chosen servants. He too would have advanced towards her. The word burhan denotes an argument or proof. Burhan from the Lord signifies the argument inspired by God to arouse Joseph's conscience, peace be upon him, and convince him that it is not at all appropriate for him to accept the woman's invitation to illegitimate enjoyment. Now, what was the argument to which reference has been made in the present verse? That argument has already been mentioned in the previous verse. My Lord has provided an honorable abode for me, so how can I do something so evil? Such wrongdoers never prosper. Then both of them rushed to the door, each seeking to get ahead of the other, and she tore Joseph's shirt from behind. Then both of them found the husband of the lady at the door. Seeing him, she said, What should be the punishment of him who has foul designs on your wife, except that he should be imprisoned or subjected to painful chastisement? قال هي راودتني عن نفسي وشهد شاهد من اهلها ان كان قميصه قد من قبل فصدقت وهو من الكاذبين Joseph peace be upon him said it is she who was trying to tempt me to herself and a witness belonging to her own household testified on grounds of circumstantial evidence. If his shirt is torn from the front, then she is telling the truth and he is a liar. But if his shirt is torn from behind, then she has lied, and he is truthful. Then she has lied, and he is truthful. The whole point of this statement is that if the shirt was rent from the front, it indicated that Joseph, peace be upon him, had taken the initiative in advancing towards the lady, and that the latter had resisted to his amorous advances. 
However, if Joseph's shirt was rent from the back, peace be upon him, that showed the opposite, viz. that it was the lady who had made the advances while Joseph had tried to run away from her. This statement also contains a subtle suggestion which needs to be pointed out. The fact that only Joseph's shirt, peace be upon him, was mentioned implies that there were no traces of any violence on the body or dress of the lady. Had Joseph, peace be upon him, been guilty of making any advances, traces of his violent advances would clearly have been visible. So when the husband saw Joseph's shirt torn from behind, he exclaimed, Surely this is one of the tricks of you women. Your tricks are indeed great. Yusuf, أعرض عن هذا واستغفري لذنبك إنك كنت من Joseph, peace be upon him, disregard this. And you, woman, ask forgiveness for your sin, for indeed it is you who has been at fault. وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ امْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ قَدْ شَغَفَهَا حُبَّا and some ladies in the city began to say, The chief's wife, violently in love with her houseboy, is out to tempt him. We think she is clearly mistaken. The chief's wife, Aziz was not his name. It was also not the title of any office, but was used for a person holding a position of high authority in Egypt. فلما سمعت بمكرهن أرسلت إليهن وأعتدت لهن متكأ وآتت كل واحدة منهن سكينا وقالت اخرج عليهن فَلَمَّا رَأَيْنَهُ أَكْبَرْنَهُ وَقَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُنَّ وَقُلْنَ حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كَرِيمٌ Hearing of their sly talk, the chief's wife sent for those ladies and arranged for them a banquet and got ready couches and gave each guest a knife. Then, while they were cutting and eating the fruit, she signaled Joseph, peace be upon him, come out to them. When the ladies saw him, they were so struck with admiration that they cut their hands, exclaiming, Allah preserve us, this is no mortal human. This is nothing but a noble angel. قالت فذلكن الذي لمتنني فيه ولقد راودته عن نفسه فاستعصم ولئن لم يفعل ما آمره لا يسجنن ولا يكون she said, So now you see, this is the one regarding whom you reproached me. Indeed, I tried to tempt him to myself, but he held back. Although if he were not to follow my order, he would have certainly be imprisoned and humiliated. قال رب السجن أحب إلي مما يدعونني إليه وإلا تصرف عني كيدهن أصب إليهن وأكم من الجاهلين. Joseph, peace be upon him, said. My Lord, I prefer imprisonment to what they ask me to do. And if you do not avert from me the guile of these women, I will succumb to their attraction and lapse into ignorance. <laughs> 
فاستجاب له ربه فصرف عنه كيدهم إنه هو السميع العليم. Thereupon his Lord granted his prayer and averted their guile from him. Surely he alone is all hearing, all knowing. ثم بدا لهم من بعد ما رأوا الآيات ليسجننه حتى حين. Then it occurred to them to cast Joseph, peace be upon him, into prison for a while, even though they had seen clear signs of Joseph's innocence and of the evil ways of their ladies. Clear signs of Joseph's innocence and of the evil ways of their ladies. This shows that sending innocent persons to prison in disregard of the due process of justice and without caring to establish their guilt or innocence is one of the accepted practices of rulers from olden days. In this regard, the evil forces of today are no better than those of 4,000 years ago. وَدَخَلَ مَعَهُ السِّجْنَ فَتَيَانِ قَالَ أَحَدُهُمَا إِنِّي أَرَانِي أَعْصِرُ خَمْرًا وقال الآخر إني أراني أحمل فوق رأسي خبزا تأكل الطير منه نبئنا بتأويله إنا نراك من المحسنين And with Joseph, peace be upon him, two other slaves entered the prison. One of them said, I saw myself pressing wine in a dream. And the other said, I saw myself carrying bread on my head, of which the birds were eating. Both said, Tell us what is its interpretation, for we consider you to be one of those who do good. <laughs> ترزقانه إلا نبأتكما بتأويله قبل أن يأتيكما ذلكما مما علمني ربي إني تركت ملة قوم لا يؤمنون بالله وهم بالآخرة هم كافرون. Joseph, peace be upon him, said, I will inform you about the interpretation of the dreams before the arrival of the food that is sent to you. This knowledge is part of what I have been taught by my Lord. I have renounced the way of those who do not believe in Allah. and who denied the hereafter. وَاتَّبَعْتُ مِلَّةَ آبَائِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ مَا كَانَ لَنَا أَن نُشْرِكَ بِاللَّهِ مِن شَيْءٍ ذَلِكَ مِن فَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا وَعَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُونَ And I have adopted the way of my forefathers, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Peace be upon them. It is not for us to associate any with Allah in His divinity. It is out of Allah's grace upon us and upon mankind that He did not require of us to serve any other than Allah. And yet most people do not give thanks. Ya sahibay sijn a'arbab mutafarriqoon khayrun amillahu al-wahid al-qahar Fellow prisoners, is it better that there be diverse lords or just Allah, the one, the irresistible? مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَّا أَسْمَاءً سَمَّيْتُمُوهَا 
Those whom you serve beside him are merely idle names that you and your fathers have fabricated without Allah sending down any sanction for them. All authority to govern rests only with Allah. He has commanded that you serve none but Him. This is the right way of life, though most people are altogether unaware. Ya sahibay sijini amma ahadukuma fayasqi rabbahu khamra وَأَمَّا الْآخَرُ فَيُصْلَبُ فَتَأْكُلُ الطَّيْرُ مِنْ رَأْسِهِ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ الَّذِي فِيهِ تَسْتَفْتِيَانِ Fellow prisoners, this is the interpretation of your dreams. One of you will serve wine to his Lord, the King of Egypt. As for the other, he will be crucified and birds will eat of his head. The question concerning what you asked has thus been decided. The king of Egypt. While studying this verse, if one were to refer to verse 23, one would see that when Joseph, peace be upon him, had used the expression, My Lord, Rabbi, he meant God. But when he told the slave of the king that he would serve wine to his Lord, Rab, he meant the king because the slave regarded the latter as his Lord and Master. وَقَالَ لِلَّذِي ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجٍ مِّنْهُ مَذْكُرْنِي عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِضْعَ سِنِينَ And Joseph, peace be upon him, said to one of the two prisoners who he knew would be set free, Mention me in your Lord's presence. But Satan caused him to forget mentioning this to his Lord, the ruler of Egypt. And so, Joseph, peace be upon him, languished in prison for several years. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَقَرَاتٍ سِمَانٍ يَأْكُلُهُنَّ سَبْعٌ عِجَافٌ وَسَبْعَ سُنْبُلَاتٍ خُبْرٍ وَأُخَرَ يَابِسَاتٍ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ أَفْتُونِي فِي رُؤْيَايَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لِلرُؤْيَا تَعْبُرُونَ And once the king said, I have dreamt that there are seven fat cows and seven lean cows are devouring them and there are seven fresh green ears of corn and seven others dry and withered. My nobles, tell me what is the interpretation of this dream, if you are well versed in interpretation of dreams. And once, omitting a few years of Joseph's life in prison, peace be upon him, the thread of the narrative is picked up again. It is connected with the stage which marks the worldly rise of Joseph, peace be upon him. قالوا أضغاث أحلام وما نحن بتأويل الأحلام بعالمين. They said, these are confused dreams, and we do not know the interpretation of such dreams. وقال الذي نجا منهما وذكر بعد أم Then of the two prisoners, the one who had been set free now remembered, after the lapse of a long period, what Joseph, peace be upon him, had said. 
He said, I will tell you the interpretation of this dream. Just send me to Joseph, peace be upon him, in prison. Yusuf, ayyuha siddiq, aftina, aftina fi sab'i baqaratin simani, ya'kuluhunna sab'un ijafun, wa sab'i sumbulatin khudrin, wa ukhara yabisatin la'alli, arji'u ila nasi la'allahum ya'lamun. Then he went to Joseph and said to him, Joseph, peace be upon him, O truthfulness incarnate, tell the true meaning of the dream in which seven fat cows are devoured by seven lean ones, and there are seven green ears of corn, and seven others dry and withered, so that I may return to the people, and they may learn. O truthfulness incarnate. In Arabic usage, the word Siddiq, which occurs in this verse, denotes the highest degree of truthfulness and veracity. The use of the word shows how deeply that person had been influenced by Joseph's character, peace be upon him. The impression seems to have been a very profound one, since it endured for a very long time. And they may learn. One of the two prisoners asked Joseph, peace be upon him, to interpret the dream in order that his true worth might be recognized, and so that it might also be realized that a big mistake had been committed by having a person of his standing imprisoned. This, he thought, would also enable him to fulfill the promise he had made to Joseph, peace be upon him, in prison. قال تزرعون سبع سنين دأبا فما حصدتم فذروه في سنبله فذروه في سنبله إلا قليلا مما تأكلون Joseph, peace be upon him, said, You will cultivate consecutively for seven years. Leave in the ears all that you have harvested, except the little out of which you may eat. Then there will follow seven years of great hardship in which you will eat up all you have stored earlier, except the little that you may set aside. Then there will come a year when people will be held by plenty of rain and they will press grapes. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ اُتُونِي بِهِ فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُ الرَّسُولُ قَالَ ارْجِعْ إِلَى رَبِّكَ فَاسْأَلْهُ مَا بَالُ النِّسْوَةِ اللَّاتِي قَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُمْ إِنَّ رَبِّي بِكَيْدِهِنَّ عَلِيمٌ the king said, Bring this man to me. But when the royal messenger came to Joseph, peace be upon him, he said, Go back to your master and ask him about the case of the women who had cut their hands. Surely my lord has full knowledge of their guile. قال ما خطبكن إذ راوتن يوسف عن نفسه قلنا حاش لله ما علمنا عليه من سوء قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حصحص الحق أنا راودته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين. Thereupon the king asked the women. What happened when you sought to tempt Joseph, peace be upon him? They said, Allah forbid, we found no evil in him. The chief's wife said, Now the truth has come to light. It was I who sought to tempt him. He is indeed truthful. 
Joseph, peace be upon him, said, I did this so that he, for instance the chief, may know that I did not betray him in his absence, and that Allah does not allow the design of the treacherous to succeed. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ I do not seek to acquit myself. For surely one's self prompts one to evil except him to whom my Lord may show mercy. Verily, my Lord is ever forgiving, most merciful. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ اُتُونِي بِهِ أَسْتَخْلِصْهُ لِنَفْسِي فَلَمَّا كَلَّمَهُ قَالَ إِنَّكَ الْيَوْمَ لَدَيْنَا مَكِينٌ أَمِينٌ The king said, Bring him to me. I will select him exclusively for my own service. So when Joseph, peace be upon him, spoke to him, the king said, You are now one of established position, fully trusted by us. Joseph, peace be upon him, said, Place me in charge of the treasures of the land. I am a good keeper and know my task well. وَلَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Thus did we establish Joseph, peace be upon him, in the land, so that he could settle wherever he pleased. We bestow favor out of our mercy on whomsoever we please, and we do not cause the reward of those who do good to go to waste, so that he could settle wherever he pleased. This means that now that Egypt was under Joseph's control, peace be upon him, he could call every part of it his own. Joseph, peace be upon him, could go without any let or hindrance to any part of Egypt that he wanted. The above verse thus describes the total sway, the all-pervasive authority Joseph held over Egypt, peace be upon him. The earlier commentators of the Quran have understood this verse in this way. For instance, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, citing Ibn Zad, has explained this verse to mean that God put Joseph, peace be upon him, in charge of everything in Egypt. Joseph, peace be upon him, was free to do whatever he wished since the whole land was under his control. Such was his authority that had he wanted, he could even have placed himself above the pharaoh. Al-Tabari also quotes a statement from Mujahid, one of the earliest leading Qur'an commentators, that the Egyptian king had embraced Islam at the hands of Joseph, peace be upon him. Surely, the reward of the hereafter is better for those who believe and act in a God-fearing way. وجاء إخوة يوسف فدخلوا عليه فعرفهم وهم له منكرون. And Joseph's brothers came to Egypt, peace be upon him, and presented themselves before him. He recognized them, but they did not know him, and presented themselves before him. Once again, the events of some seven or eight years have been skipped over and the narration has been resumed from the point of describing the migration of the Israelites to Egypt. أَلَا تَرَوْنَ أَنِّي 
فِي الْكَيْلَ وَأَنَا خَيْرُ الْمُنْزِلِينَ And when he had prepared for them their provisions, Joseph, peace be upon him, said, Bring to me your other brother from your father. Do you not see that I give full measure and am most hospitable? فَإِن لَّمْ تَأْتُونِي بِهِ فَلَا كَيْلَ لَكُمْ عِندِي وَلَا تَقْرَبُونَ And if you do not bring him to me, you shall have no corn from me, and do not even attempt to come close to me. And do not even attempt to come close to me. It will be recalled that food rationing was in force in Egypt at that time, and each individual was entitled to a specified quantity of grain and no more. As we know, the ten brothers had come with the purpose of obtaining grain and would naturally have asked for a share on behalf of their father and their eleventh brother. This presumably provided Joseph, peace be upon him, with grounds reasonable enough to make his point. He could possibly have accepted that there was a valid reason for their father not to come to Egypt, for he was old and blind, but there was no such reason in respect of their brother. Joseph, peace be upon him, might have said that trusting their word, he would permit them to receive the full supply of grain on this occasion, but if they failed to bring their stepbrother the next time, they would not be trusted any longer and would receive no grain at all. They said, We will surely try to prevail over our father to send him. Be sure we shall do so. And Joseph, peace be upon him, said to his servants, Put surreptitiously in their packs the goods they had given in exchange for corn. Joseph, peace be upon him, did so, expecting that they would find it when they returned home. Feeling grateful for this generosity, they might be inclined to return to him. فَلَمَّا رَجَعُوا إِلَىٰ أَبِيهِمْ قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا مُنِعَ مِنَّا الْكَيْلُ فَأَرْسِلْ مَعَنَا أَخَانَا نَكْتَلْ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ When they returned to their father, they said, Father, we have been denied further supply of corn. So send us with our brother, that we may bring the supplies. We shall be responsible for his protection. The father said, Shall I trust you with regard to him as I had trusted you earlier with regard to his brother? Allah is the best protector and is the most merciful. وَلَمَّا فَتَحُوا مَتَاعَهُمْ وَجَدُوا بِضَاعَتَهُمْ رُدَّتْ إِلَيْهِمْ قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا مَا نَبْغِي هَذِهِ بِضَاعَتُنَا رُدَّتْ إِلَيْنَا وَنَمِيرُ أَهْلَنَا وَنَحْفَظُ أَخَانَا وَنَزْدَادُ كَيْلَ بَعِيرٌ ذَلِكَ كَيْلٌ يَسِيرٌ And when they opened their things, they found that their goods had been given back to them. Thereupon they cried, Father, what else would we desire? Look, even our goods have been given back to us. So we shall go now and bring supplies for our family. We shall protect our brother and bring another camel load of corn. That additional supply will be easily secured. قال لن أرسله معكم حتى تؤتون موثقا من الله لتأتنني به إلا أن يحاط بكم فلما 
Their father said, I shall never send him with you until you give me a solemn promise in the name of Allah that you will bring him back to me unless you yourselves are surrounded. Then, after they had given him their solemn promise, he said, Allah watches over what we have said. وَقَالَ يَا بَنِيَّ لَا تَدْخُلُوا مِن بَابٍ وَاحِدٍ وَدْخُلُوا مِنْ أَبْوَابٍ مُتَفَرِّقَةٍ وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِنِ الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And he enjoined them, My sons, do not enter the city by one gate. Rather, enter it by different gates. I can be of no help to you against Allah. Allah's command alone prevails. In Him have I put my trust, and in Him should all those who have faith put their trust. My sons, do not enter the city by one gate. Jacob, peace be upon him, might have feared that if his sons entered in a group during a period of famine, they might be mistaken for wild tribesmen looking for loot and plunder. And it so happened that when they entered the city by many gates, as their father had directed them, this precautionary measure proved ineffective against Allah's will. There was an uneasiness in Jacob's soul, peace be upon him, which he so tried to remove. Surely, he was possessed of knowledge owing to the knowledge that we bestowed upon him. But most people do not know the truth of the matter. وَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَخَاهُ قَالَ إِنِّي أَنَا أَخُوكَ فَلَا تَبْتَئِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ When they presented themselves before Joseph, peace be upon him, he took his brother aside to himself and said, Verily, I am your own brother, Joseph, peace be upon him. So do not grieve over the manner they have treated you. So do not grieve over the manner they have treated you. Benjamin might have told Joseph, peace be upon them, of the maltreatment meted out to him by his stepbrothers. Joseph, peace be upon him, might also have confronted Benjamin, saying that from then onwards he would stay with him, that he would not allow him to return with his cruel stepbrothers. It is quite likely that at this point the two brothers might have jointly worked out a plan that would enable Benjamin to remain behind in Egypt. The two brothers did not, however, wish to disclose this plan, as Joseph, peace be upon him, wanted certain things to stay concealed at least for a while. فَلَمَّا جَهَّزَهُمْ بِجَهَازِهِمْ جَعَلَ السِّقَايَةَ فِي رَحْلِ أَخِيهِ جَعَلَ السِّقَايَةَ فِي رَحْلِ أَخِيهِ ثُمَّ أَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ أَيَّتُهَا الْعِيرُ إِنَّكُمْ لَسَارِقُونَ Then, while Joseph, peace be upon him, was having their provisions loaded, he put his drinking cup in his brother's saddlebag. And then a herald cried, Travelers, you are thieves. <laughs> Turning back, they asked, What have you lost? قَالُوا نَفْقِدُ صُوَاعَ الْمَلِكِ وَلِمَنْ جَاءَ بِهِ حِمْلُ بَعِيرٍ 
The official said, We have lost the king's cup. And their chief added, He who brings it shall have a camel load of provisions. I guarantee that. They said, By Allah, you certainly know that we did not come to act corruptly in this land, nor are we those who steal. قالوا فما جزاؤه إن كنتم كاذبين. The officials said, If you are lying, what will be the penalty for him who has stolen? قالوا جزاؤه من وجد في رحله فهو جزاؤه. They replied, He on whose saddlebag the cup is found, he himself shall be its recompense. Thus do we punish the wrongdoers. كذلك كدنا ليوسف ما كان ليأخذ أخاه في دين الملك إلا أن يشاء الله نرفع درجات من نشاء وفوق كل ذي علم عليم Then Joseph, peace be upon him, began searching their bags before searching his own brother's bag. Then he brought forth the drinking cup from his brother's bag. Thus did we contrive to support Joseph, peace be upon him. He had no right, according to the religion of the king, i.e. the law of Egypt, to take his brother unless Allah so willed. We will exalt whomsoever we will over others by several degrees. And above all those who know is the one who truly knows, to take his brother unless Allah so willed. Usually translators and commentators of the Qur'an consider the verse to mean the following. Joseph could not have apprehended his brother according to the law of the land. Such an understanding of the verse is wrong. For what would prevent Joseph from arresting a thief under the king's law, peace be upon him? In fact, there has never been any state on earth which prevented the arrest of a thief. Therefore, it would be right to say that it would have been unbecoming of Joseph, peace be upon him, a prophet of God, to act according to the law of the king. He, therefore, asked his brothers about their own law and arrested his brother under the Abrahamic law. <laughs> فَأَسَرَّهَا يُوسُفُ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَلَمْ يُبْدِهَا لَهُمْ قَالَ أَنْتُمْ شَرٌّ مَكَانًا وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا تَصِفُونَ They said, No wonder that he steals for a brother of his stole before. But Joseph, peace be upon him, kept his reaction to himself without disclosing the truth to them. He merely said to himself, You are an evil lot. Allah knows well the truth of the accusation that you are making against me to my face. <laughs> They said, O powerful chief, Al-Aziz, his father is an age-stricken man, and in order that he may not suffer, seize one of us in his stead. We indeed consider you an excellent person. They said, O powerful chief, Al-Aziz, 
In the above verse, the title Aziz, literally the powerful one, has been used for Joseph, peace be upon him. In view of this usage, some Qur'an commentators are of the opinion that Joseph, peace be upon him, was appointed to the same office that had been held earlier by Zalikha's husband. We have already noted that the word Aziz was not the specific appellation of any particular office. It was used in the sense of incumbent of power. قَالَ مَعَاذَ اللَّهِ أَن نَأْخُذَ إِلَّا مَنْ وَجَدْنَا مَتَاعَنَا عِنْدَهُ إِنَّا إِذَا لَظَالِمُونَ Joseph, peace be upon him, said, Allah forbid that we should seize any except him with whom we found our good. Were we to do so, we would surely be one of the wrongdoers, with whom we found our good. Joseph's circumspection is noteworthy, peace be upon him. When the cup was found in Benjamin's saddlebag, Joseph, peace be upon him, did not charge him with stealing. Joseph, peace be upon him, according to the Quran, used the expression, with whom we find our good. In Islamic terminology, such an expression is termed, tawriya. The term denotes, covering up or concealing some fact. One may resort to Tariya in a situation where there remains no other alternative to save a victim from his oppressor, or to ward off a serious mischief other than resorting to a statement or device which conceals the true facts. Faced with a difficult situation such as the one mentioned above, a pious person would refrain from lying, but he might well resort to an ambiguous statement or to a device aimed at concealing facts so as to ward off wrong. Now, let us consider how, in this particular instance, Joseph fulfilled all the conditions of a permissible Tawriya. First, he put the drinking cup in Benjamin's saddlebag with the latter's full consent. He did not, however, direct the servants to charge Benjamin with stealing. When the servants charged the brothers with theft, Joseph simply stood up and without uttering a word, searched their belongings. Subsequently, when Joseph's brothers requested him to detain any of them in place of Benjamin, he simply responded by saying that they themselves had suggested that only the person with whom the stolen good was found should be detained. Now, since the cup was found in Benjamin's saddlebag, he could be detained. For by what right could anyone else be detained? فَلَمَّا اسْتَيْأَسُوا مِنْهُ خَلَصُوا نَجِيًّا قَالَ كَبِيرُهُمْ أَلَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ أَبَاكُمْ قَدْ أَخَذَ عَلَيْكُمْ مَوْثِقًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنْ قَبْلُ مَا فَرَّطْتُمْ فِي يُوسُفِ فَلَنْ أَبَرَحَ الْأَرْضَ حَتَّى يَأْذَنَ لِي أَبِي أَوْ يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ لِي وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ Then, when they had despaired of Joseph, peace be upon him, they went to a corner and counseled together. The eldest of them said, Do you not know that your father has taken a solemn promise from you in the name of Allah? And you failed in your duty towards Joseph, peace be upon him. So I will not depart from this land until my father permits me, or Allah pronounces his judgment in my favor. He is the best of those who judge. <laughs> So go back to your father and tell him, Father, your son has certainly been guilty of stealing. We did not see him stealing, but testify according to what we know. And obviously, we had no power to keep watch over that what is altogether hidden from us. <laughs> Inna 
you may inquire of the dwellers of the city where we were and of the people of the caravan with whom we traveled. We are altogether truthful in what we say. قال بل سولت لكم أنفسكم أمرا فصبر جميل عسى الله أن يأتيني بهم جميعا إنه هو العليم الحكيم The father heard the narration and said All that is untrue but your souls have made it easy for you to engage in a heinous act. So I will be graciously patient even at this. Allah may well bring them all back to me. He is all-knowing, all-wise. But your souls have made it easy for you to engage in a heinous act. Jacob, peace be upon him, said that it was not at all difficult for his sons to accuse Benjamin, whose character and conduct he knew to be excellent of stealing a cup. Such behavior on their part did not surprise him, for in the past they had deliberately caused their brother Joseph, peace be upon him, to be lost. Not only that, they had felt no compunction in bringing back his shirt with false bloodstains in order to reinforce their claim that Joseph, peace be upon him, had been eaten up by a wolf. And now they were telling Jacob, peace be upon him, with equal ease of conscience that Benjamin had committed theft. وَتَوَلَّى عَنْهُمْ وَقَالَ يَا أَسَفَا عَلَى يُوسُفَ وَبِيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ Then he turned his back to them and said, O oh my grief for Joseph, peace be upon him. His eyes whitened with grief and he was choked up with sorrow, trying to suppress his grief. قالوا تالله تفتأ تذكر يوسف حتى تكون حرضا أو تكون من الهالكين. The sons said, By Allah, you will continue to remember Joseph, peace be upon him, until you will either consume yourself with grief or will die. قال إنما أشكو بثي وحزني إلى الله وأعلم من الله ما لا تعلمون. He said, I will address my sorrow and grief only to Allah, and I know from Allah what you do not know. يا بني يذهبوا فتحسسوا من يوسف وأخيه ولا تيأسوا من روح الله إنه لا ييأس من روح الله إلا القوم الكافرون my sons go and try to find out about Joseph peace be upon him and his brother and do not despair of Allah's mercy. Verily, only the unbelievers despair of Allah's mercy. وجئنا ببضاعة مزجاة فأوف لنا الكيل وتصدق علينا إن الله يجزي المتصدقين. On going to Egypt, they presented themselves to Joseph and said to him, Peace be upon him. O chief, we and our family are struck with distress and have brought only a paltry sum. So give us corn in full measure and give it to us in charity. Allah rewards those who are charitable. قال هل علمتم ما فعلتم بيوسف وأخيه إذ أنتم جاهلون. When Joseph, peace be upon him, heard this, he could not hold himself and said, Do you remember what you did to Joseph, peace be upon him, and his brother when you were ignorant? قالوا أئنك لأنت يوسف قال أنا يوسف وهذا أخي قد من الله علينا 
They exclaimed, Are you indeed Joseph? Peace be upon him. He said, Yes, I am Joseph, and this is my brother. Allah has surely been gracious to us. Indeed, whoever fears Allah and remains patient, Allah does not allow the reward of such people to go to waste. قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ آثَرَكَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَإِن كُنَّا لَخَاطِئِينَ They said, We swear by Allah. Indeed, Allah has chosen you in preference to us, and we were truly guilty. قَالَ لَا تَثْرِيبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمِ he replied, No blame lies with you today. May Allah forgive you. He is the most merciful of all those that are merciful. Take this shirt of mine and throw it over my father's face. He will regain his sight and bring to me all your family. وَلَمَّا فَصَلَتِ الْعِيرُ قَالَ أَبُوهُمْ إِنِّي لَأَجِدُ رِيحَ يُوسُفَ لَوْلَا أَن تُفَنِّدُونَ And as the caravan set out from Egypt, their father said in Canaan, Indeed, I smell the fragrance of Joseph, peace be upon him. I say so, although you may think that I am doting. They said, Surely you are still in your same old craze. And when the bearer of good news came, he threw Joseph's shirt over Jacob's face. Peace be upon them. Whereupon he regained his sight and said, Did I not tell you that I know from Allah what you do not know? They said, Father, pray for the forgiveness of our sins. We were truly guilty. قَالَ سَوْفَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ رَبِّي إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ He said, I shall pray to my Lord for your forgiveness, for He, and indeed He alone, is ever forgiving, most merciful. فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَى يُوسُفَ آوَى إِلَيْهِ أَبَوَيْهِ وَقَالَ دُخُلُوا مِصْرَ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ And when they went to Joseph, peace be upon him, he took his parents aside and said to the members of his family, Enter the city now. And if Allah wills, you shall be secure. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِ مِنْ بَعْدِ 
And after they had entered the city, Joseph, peace be upon him, raised his parents to the throne beside himself, and they involuntarily bowed in prostration before him. Joseph said, Father, this is the fulfillment of the vision I had before, one that my Lord has caused to come true. He was kind to me when he rescued me from the prison and brought you from the desert after Satan had stirred discord between me and my brothers. Certainly, my Lord is subtle in the fulfillment of his will. He is all-knowing, all-wise. And they involuntarily bowed in prostration before him. The use of the term sajda, prostration, in the above verse has given rise to considerable misconception. This misconception reached such heights that some people interpreted the verse to justify prostration before kings and saints, calling it prostration of greeting or prostration of respect, as distinguished from prostration of worship. Since in Islam, prostration is associated with worship, some scholars resorted to an altogether novel explanation. They contended that it was only the prostration of worship provided it was directed to any other than God which was prohibited in the earlier versions of divine law. As for prostration which did not signify any worship, it was permissible even in respect of persons other than God. They claimed that it is only in the sharia of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that all forms of prostration directed to anyone other than God are forbidden. What lies at the core of all this confusion is the word sajda, prostration, as used in the verse. It has been taken in the technical sense in which it has come to be used in Islam as meaning putting one's feet, knees, and forehead on the ground. However, the true meaning of sajda is to bow, and in the above verse the word has been used exactly in that sense. فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت وليه في الدنيا والآخرة توفني مسلما وألحقني بالصالحين. My Lord, you have bestowed dominion upon me and have taught me to comprehend the depths of things. O Creator of heavens and earth, you are my guardian in this world and in the hereafter. Cause me to die in submission to you, and join me in the end with the righteous. O Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is part of the news from the unseen that we reveal to you, for you were not present with them when Joseph's brothers jointly resolved on a plot. <laughs> And most of the people, howsoever you might so desire, are not going to believe. You do not seek from them any recompense for your service. This is merely an admonition to all mankind. وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ How many are the signs in the heavens and the earth which people pass by without giving any heed? وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ 
and most of them believe in Allah only when they associate others with Him in His divinity. Do they then feel secure that an overwhelming chastisement shall not visit them? And the hour shall not suddenly come upon them without their even perceiving it. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبَحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Tell them plainly, this is my way. I call you to Allah on the basis of clear perception, both I and those who follow me. Allah, glory be to Him, is free of every imperfection. I have nothing to do with those who associate others with Allah in His divinity. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِن قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَدَارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ The messengers whom we raised before you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, and to whom we send down revelations, were only human beings, and were from among those living in earthly habitations. Have these people not traveled in the earth that they may observe the end of their predecessors? Certainly, the abode of the hereafter is much better for those who accepted the call of the messengers and acted in a God-fearing manner. Will you still not act with good sense? <laughs> أنهم قد كذبوا جاءهم نصرنا فنجي من نشاء ولا يرد بأسنا عن القوم المجرمين. It also happened with the earlier messengers that for long they preached and people paid no heed until the messengers despaired of their people. And the people also fancied that they had been told lies by the messengers. Then, suddenly, our help came to the messengers. And when such an occasion comes, we rescue whom we will. As for the guilty, our chastisement cannot be averted from them. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون. Certainly, in the stories of the bygone people, there is a lesson for people of understanding. What is being narrated in the Qur'an is no fabrication. It is rather confirmation of the books that preceded it and a detailed exposition of everything and a guidance and mercy for people of faith. And a detailed exposition of everything. A detailed exposition of everything refers to a detailed exposition of all that is necessary for man's guidance. This does not encompass everything in a literal sense. Some people misunderstand the purpose of this verse and consider everything to include even such matters as detailed knowledge of forestry, medicine, mathematics, and all other branches of learning. They feel perplexed when they do not find information regarding all arts and sciences in the Qur'an. On the other hand, some people are prepared to go to any length to prove the availability of all conceivable details of everything in the scripture.